Welcome back to Spirit Spells and Magic. In this episode, we are looking at protecting ourselves, doing various protection wards and charms and spells. An important aspect in starting your witchy journey is knowing how to protect yourself and your home. When delving into things as a beginner, it is best to learn protection first. We don't want to accidentally open a portal to something we don't intend. I hope nobody intends that anyway, by the way. <laughs> Once you are comfortable spell casting, you won't be as worried. But prevention is always better than the cure. There are several craft solutions that you can do to keep your house safe, as well as some really simple things. Here are two really simple things that you can do to keep your house and your people in it safe. The first thing you can do is a simple sage or palo santo. I do it once a month, usually on the full moon. But you can also use other methods to sage and palo santo. Other people often use rosemary, as rosemary is the universal herb which is used in place of pretty much anything that you can think of or anything you'd need, you can use rosemary for. It's probably a really good herb to have if you don't already have it. If you don't have any herbs to burn, that's perfectly fine. The other alternatives to this is incense. If you have a stick of incense, you can light that as long as your intention is there to remove any negativity ensuring that you have your windows and doors open while you do this not just to save your smoke alarm from going off but also to let anything negative escape the house and let it out you don't want to store it in and lock it up in your house you want it out of there so it's a good idea to have all windows and doors open or as many as you can while you're saging or smoking out your house and if you don't have incense simply have a bowl of water and some white salt as salt is a very good protectant agent. Salt is one of the best effective protection materials that you can use if you don't have anything else. I mean we hear from history how they used to put salt in the doorways to prevent evil coming in. It's exactly that. It protects your house. So even if you don't want to use up all your salt going around the perimeter of your house which I don't think anyone really wants to do that you can pop salt in water and swirl it around and use that to splash in each room you can use um, a little sponge or your fingertips even if you feel like your fingers will direct that energy out so salt in a water bowl each room splashing that stuff maybe not you know, saturating your house but flicking it into the room with intention banish the spirits banish those negative energies banish anything that does not bring love and light and you can say something like only the good spirits remain or love and light only something I say when I do my saging is banishing negative spirits and only love and light cleanse this house only love and light and I just chant it kind of around the house as I go I must sound very weird to the neighbors especially when I go out there on a full moon and start talking to the moon I'm sure I look a real treat but hey that's my life I'm kind of in the broom closet where my family are concerned but in my own home I'm an eclectic white witch that's how I am um, I don't really follow anything to the T um, or exactly by the book. So I don't really want to label myself as Wiccan or Pagan. or I'm just enjoying learning again as I used to do this kind of stuff when I was in my mid to late teens. And now I'm enjoying being a witch again. <laughs> and in the nice way. And bringing abundance of all kinds into my life, manifesting each full moon and new moon, things that I want in my life, letting go of things that aren't helpful. And that's pretty much it, really. Um, I try, like most 
witches and Wiccans do to put magic and witchcraft into every day. Think when you're making a coffee or a tea, what intent do you want? Oh, I want that nice cup of tea to warm me up inside in winter. And all oh, that nice cup of coffee, I want it to provide me with clarity and have an intent there. And thank even all the little herbs that go into your little tea bag. You can focus on that. But any anything you do, you do with intent. And you do it with positivity and banish that negativity out of your home because you don't need it there. And another thing that you can do is have some bells at your door or a wind chime. That also works as a purifier and enhances good energy, warding off evil and welcoming in good spirits. Now, the first way that we can protect our home is by using a spray, a cleansing and calming spray that also removes negativity and blocks it from being in your home. The first step in this spell is to, if you have any, find some pieces of protection stones like obsidian, onyx, black tourmaline, anything that you've got there that's black. Alternatively, you could use smoky quartz as well. Or if you have any crystal, pop it in the old jar of water. I'm actually using water that I had out on the night of the eclipse, the lunar eclipse, and I've labelled it eclipse water. I also have moon water too that I have put out on the full moon. It draws the energy from the full moon into the water. Otherwise, you can just use tap water. The idea is the energy the energy from the crystals. I've got some cockatoos outside at the moment that are really loud. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear them, but they are loud. There's a lot going on at the sh in the street today, so <laughs> bear with me. But the idea is that the energy from these crystals fuse the water, and we'll be using this water in our spray. Once you have your stones in the jar, pour in the eclipse water or moon water or whatever water you have and you want to cover the crystals not all the way to the top it doesn't have to be all the way to the top but submerging the crystals in the water as much as you feel is necessary now leave that water there for a little while maybe a couple of hours or overnight and let that infuse with the crystals once it's been enough time and the crystals have sat in the water for long enough you can start adding in the other ingredients. But first, remove the crystals. It's better to fish them out rather than leave them in with all the gooey stuff. As we know with our sweeteners jar, leaving the crystals in there, they can get a bit dirty and then you've got to clean them afterwards. But once you've got those crystals out, give them a bit of a dry, maybe with a tea towel or something like that. Because some crystals don't like water, as we've spoken about before. So it's best to know which ones are able to be placed in water and then maybe only for a little time. Once you've fished them out, it's time to put the ingredients in. We start with lime juice. We cut the lime up and squeeze the juice as much as you feel is necessary or whatever you can get out of the lime that you've got. <laughs> if you don't have a lime, you can use lemon instead. Lemon for protection is really good too. It's that stingy citrusy, if it squirts in your eye, it's, it's especially nasty stuff and good to ward off evil. The next ingredient we have is eucalyptus oil. It only requires a couple of drops if you have it. Otherwise, you can move on to the next ingredient, which is cinnamon. If you have cinnamon sticks, you can break them up and put them in. And if you don't have cinnamon sticks, but you've got the powder, like I do, just shake a bit of the powder into the jar. That's all gonna nicely mix about. Next, we have wild lavender, adding only a couple of drops, as much as you feel you need. And then once you've added in the wild lavender drops, 
The next ingredient we have is lavender itself. And if you have plant lavender, <laughs> rather than just the essential oil, pop a couple of sprigs of that in as well. And that's basically it. These are all the ingredients that we've got for our protection spell jar today. There are so many more ingredients you can add. And I'll pop a list up of a couple at the end of this video. Now, for this protection spell spray, you can let it sit for a little while and let the juices infuse. And then find a bottle, a spray bottle. You can pick them up for about $2 from Reject Shop or a dollar shop. Make sure if you're using a bottle that's being used for something else that you clean the bottle out. We don't want anything, any residue from a previous usage getting into our spell spray, our protection spell spray. And then pop around your house spraying in every room with intention. Next up we have another protection spell, the protection spell jar. Yes, I had the protection spell jar label on the wrong jar, but that's okay, moving right along. Now this jar has quite simple ingredients, but the first step we need to take when using an item is to cleanse it. We can do this by lighting some sage or rosemary or a simple incense stick and letting the smoke fill up the jar. Once the jar has been filled, we can now commence adding the ingredients. Like most protection spells, salt is used. And we've got table salt here, just some simple white table salt, as well as some black pepper. These are black ground peppercorns, but uh, use whatever you like, whatever you've got around the house. Simple pepper's fine. Bit of salt and pepper like you throw on your steak. Now, I also have some cut up bits of lime rind. You can use lemon as well. They're pretty interchangeable, lime and lemon. But putting a bit of lemon rind or lime rind, as well as a couple of little pieces of ivy. Ivy's also a very good protection element. As well as lavender. And we'll be popping a couple of pieces of lavender in here as well. This is more of a dry jar. Now we've got to find the lid and we'll seal our jar. Now sealing activates the protection jar. With intention, putting in all the ingredients and sealing the jar makes the spell come alive. And we're going to add something special on the side of this also. On the spell jar, we're going to add a sigil. Sigil comes from the Latin word sigillum, meaning seal. And that is basically what it's doing. You can use sigils for anything to seal your intent. Now, we're looking at protection seals. So a way that we can do this is to write down what you want. What is your intention? In this particular episode, I'm doing a protection sigil for my house. So I'm going to write down, my house is protected. And what I will do is cross out all the vowels and any double letters that we have. And I'm left with only consonants that are single, not repeating. And using these letters, I will create a design that will be my sigil that I will use with great intent to protect my house. And this is how it will look. You can fiddle around any way you like, putting the letters in any kind of order or any kind of pattern. A lot of people have kind of a design in their mind before they go ahead and draw it. And they manipulate the letters by putting them maybe upside down or sideways or reversed and doing them in different styles to make them look a certain way. But you can do your sigil any way you like. And there are other types of sigils out there as well. Some created by numbers and also pictures. You can draw 
a picture of what you want your sigil to look like. You don't need to use letters. I would draw a house with a lock on the front of it, protecting it if I was going to do a protection sigil of a picture. But I'm going to use the letters from my house is protected. And this is how it looks. You can use this sigil and put it anywhere in your house that you wish. Put it on your spell jars, put it on your front door. You can put it in any entryway to your house to protect it. As long as your intention's there that protects your house or whatever it is that the sigil is for. If your intention's there, then that power is behind it and it will keep you safe or make you rich or make you lovable or <laughs> make you positive, whatever you think, whatever your intention, will that sigil will aid you. For this spell jar, I'm going to cut out the sigil and place it on the side of the jar. As we won't be burning the contents of the jar, I was considering whether I should place the sigil on the inside as sometimes they fall off. We don't want that happening. But I went ahead and stuck it on the outside. Um, but yes, you can definitely stick it on the inside of the jar if you wish. It might make it stay there a little bit better. Once you've sealed the jar, the intention is set. And now we can light a candle and start saying something about the spell jar, some kind of incantation or chant. Little jar, keep my protection spell. Everybody in this house is safe where they dwell. Or everybody in the house is safe and well. Something like that anyway. But anything that fits with what you're doing. Now, for safety reasons, it's good to get something like a plate underneath because we're going to burn wax over the top to seal the spell jar. Now, I didn't have a black candle, but a black candle is usually really good for protection spells or to ward off negativity. This white candle, when I burn the edges, will actually produce a black wax over the top. But first, if you have some black string or black twine or wool, you can put that around the top and it kind of holds or seals it in, warding off the negativity. And now proceed in putting candle wax over the top to seal it, letting that wax run down the sides until you've used enough wax that you believe it's pretty secure. As mentioned before in the sweetness jar episode, you don't need to cover the whole thing in wax, although if you choose to, and you're quite welcome to, but just enough that it seals the sides of the jar and looks pretty well covered with wax. And your protection spell jar is complete. With the jar spell, you can alternatively do this in a bag. If you have like a little um, charm bag or something like that, that you can use to put the ingredients in instead of a jar. Either way, you can take these with you. If you're going out or in the car or going to work, you can take these items as they're kind of portable. Another way that you can protect your home is with a lemon vinegar and salt ward. This is mixed together. You'll know how much you need of each. I usually put in half a teaspoon of salt uh, followed by a couple of squirts of lemon juice and maybe about a tablespoon or a little bit of vinegar. And then I kind of mix it around a little bit so it kind of mixes together. And then I'll apply that to every window in my house. Every window sill. It's like every entryway that anything could come inside your house. So I do my windows and I'll also do my door frames too. So window sills and door frames, and I normally just kind of wipe it, <laughs> wipe it around as best I can. I'm quite short, so I can't reach the very top of my windows or the very top of my door, but I do my best. And the intention there, the intention must be there to protect your house. Along with the intention, you can actually say a statement with your whole focus and your heart and your mind and body behind it. 
you could say something like, protect this house and all within. Keep negativity out and positivity in. Mote it be. Mote it be is something that is said uh, as a finisher to the spell, similar to the Christian religion of saying Amen after a prayer. Amen meaning, so be it. It is also like saying, and so it is, and it will be done, or, and it is so. So you can pick anything you like to say, really. Whatever feels comfortable to you and right for you. And lastly, we have our winter home protection charm. Now, originally, I was going to use vines to wind it into an ank shape, similar to how we did the wreath for autumn. It kind of changed along the way. I added a few things to it, and it didn't really look like an ank anymore. But I'll show you along the way. So basically, I got some vines from the backyard, I asked the vine bush if I could take it and it obliged and I took it and said thanks to the vine bush. Now I had one long bit that worked as a shape for the ink and then I just proceeded to wind the vine around it to kind of thicken up the body of the ink. Took a lot of winding and kind of threading each end piece through some loops that were left from the previous or as you're winding it you kind of just loop it through it seemed to be thickening up and coming along pretty well it took quite a lot of vine though to build it up as fat as what it is but i kept going winding and winding but I kept on winding and winding the vines around and around and re-threading them through to kind of tie off the ends and then doing it again with another piece of vine and it started to really take shape. I started threading it through the top part of the ank as well just to kind of make it look a little bit more feminine I guess. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I was going for but I just kind of did it on the fly and it started to look really good <laughs> funnily enough <laughs> when it came to doing the crossbar of the yank I had to come up with a way to kind of make the arms thin I did this by wrapping the vines around a book first and then sliding it off the end and that kind of made for two arms or the cross part of the yank but I had to then wind some vine around the ends of the crossbar as it did seem to get a little bit wild on the ends and had a mind of its own. I had to rein it in a couple of times. It seemed to just run away. <laughs> but we got there. As I went along, it began to look more like a doll than an egg. But uh, it still looked pretty good. Now I needed to dress the doll or the egg with the other parts of the protective qualities. Now, the vine, I'm not 100% sure what type of plant that was from exactly, but there's going to be other parts to this ink doll that include the protective components, such as lavender. I dried out some lavender recently and I thought it would look nice kind of cascading down from the cross part of the ank and it looked like a bit of a dress. So we're just going to go with it being a doll now <laughs> rather than an ank or it's an ank doll. It's a home winter protection ank doll charm. That sounds pretty good. I decorated the doll some more by adding an orange slice that had been dried out for Yule as kind of like a necklace or <laughs> a charm for the charm, if you will. But it did look good and there was only one little bit left, a piece of ivy for the top. It kind of looked like a bit of a crown for our home winter protection crowned doll. <laughs> but it did look pretty good, I must say. I might have to do a couple of little hot glue fixes just to keep it all together. But it wasn't too bad for a first effort. 
and along with the spray, the spell jar for the home protection spell jar with the sigil, as well as the vinegar, salt, and lemon wash. I think the home's pretty protected now. Now, as promised earlier, here is a list of some of the herbs and plants that you can use for protection spells. Doing these kinds of spells for protection or banishing negativity, you can do this on a full moon, which will make the spells a lot stronger. If you want to do it right away and it's not going to be a full moon for three weeks or something awful like that <laughs> you can do them right away there are days of the week where it's better to do certain spells but once again if you have to do it right away then you just need to say your intention a little differently for instance we know that the new moon is about bringing in what we want setting intentions for the future. You can set the intention on a new moon or leading up to the full moon, which is the waxing moon, where it's between the new moon and the full moon. So it's when the moon's getting bigger, going from smaller crescent to larger and then to the full moon. In this time, the energy is good to bring things into you, what you want. Now, once you hit that full moon, it becomes a waning moon, which is where the moon gets smaller and smaller and recedes to the new moon where it disappears, or dark moon, as some people call it. In this time, the waning moon is when you want things away from you. As the full moon is where we release or let go of anything that doesn't serve us, in the waning stages, we are getting rid of before we get to the new moon. So if you want to banish something out of your life or banish negativity, do it in the waning moon or the full moon. If you want to bring protection in and positivity in, you do it on the new moon and the waxing moons. So you can really do it any time. Thank you for watching this episode on home protection spells. We will have an upcoming episode on protecting yourself outside of the home and ways that we can do this. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and hit that notification bell so you are aware when I'm posting another video. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.